aliens decide to save the planet from mankind by releasing billions of bugs upon the city, which consume an entire stadium in an instant. Today we will recap the 2008 movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. The year is 1928. Somewhere in the snow-covered Indian mountains of the Karakorum, a mountaineer is preparing his gear for a new ascent. Suddenly he spots a bright ray of light amidst the peaks and decides to find out what is going on. As he makes his way toward the source of the light, the climber discovers a luminous sphere that has been covered by a thin layer of ice. Curiosity overcomes him and he strikes the ice with a pickaxe. He is immediately enveloped in a bright light, which causes him to lose consciousness. After a while, the climber wakes up and notices that the sphere has disappeared and that a strange round mark has appeared on his arm. The camera takes us to the present. Astrobiologist Dr. Helen Benson gives a lecture on extraterrestrial bacteria at Princeton University. After class, the lab technician invites her to a party, but she refuses because certain extreme conditions await her at home. By these she means her young stepson Jacob, with whom she has a complicated relationship. At home, the boy refuses to eat healthy food and keeps playing video games. Helen is distracted by a phone call, where an unknown person specifies her residential address and informs her that a car is coming for her soon. Moments later, a police squad arrives at the woman's house and there is a knock on the door. The man in the suit tells Dr. Benson that the FBI needs her help. He requests to follow them immediately without giving any more information. Leaving Jacob in the care of her neighbor, the confused woman gets into the car. On the way, Helen persistently tries to find out why the FBI needs her, but the agents accompanying her do not know anything. However, the case is urgent, otherwise she would not have been escorted by several dozen police cars. The motorcade arrives at an airfield, where Dr. Benson boards a helicopter. There, escorted by the military, there are civilian people, who are just as unaware of the reason for their sudden abduction. Among them are assembled specialists from various fields, a nuclear physicist, an astronomer, a civil engineer. Those gathered are sure that they were not mobilized for exercises and that something extraordinary has happened somewhere. The scientists are taken to the Linwood Military Academy in New Jersey. Upon entering the building, the military asks everyone to surrender their cell phones, but Helen manages to hide her phone under her clothes. They are greeted by Dr. Michael Granier, who introduces them to the situation. An unidentified object from space is approaching Earth following an unconventional trajectory. According to preliminary calculations of the scientists, the object will inevitably collide with the planet, and due to its huge speed, it is impossible to shoot it down with missiles beforehand. Therefore, the government decided to form an emergency response team, which will be able to deal with the consequences of the imminent catastrophe. The team is just over an hour before the cosmic object falls on Manhattan and kills 8 million residents. After the meeting, Helen locks herself in the bathroom to call Jacob and warn him of the danger. She doesn't know how to tell her child the shocking truth, so she asks him to lock himself in the basement to wait out the big storm. Her conversation is overheard by one of the military and she knocks threateningly on the cubicle door. Upon learning that Dr. Benson has been smuggling a phone with her, the military woman asks if she can borrow the device to call her loved ones. A team of scientists heads to the suspected site of the object's impact. They are all alarmed, the object cannot be identified, and the rocket launch system is blocked by something. In fear, they hold hands and count down the last seconds until impact, but nothing happens. Through the helicopter window, the team sees a bright ball of light slowly approaching Earth, illuminating the streets of New York City. The space object lands in the middle of Central Park, causing citizens to flee in terror. Clad in protective suits, the scientists cautiously approach the glowing sphere. As they approach, they detect the presence of strong electromagnetic waves. Military, police and snipers surround the glowing ball on all sides, awaiting further orders. A bright light dazzles everyone present and an alien creature emerges to meet them. Helen, as if mesmerized, slowly approaches the alien and he extends his hand to her. The woman reaches out to him in return, but at that moment a shot is fired and the alien visitor falls senseless into her arms. Suddenly a huge creature appears out of the light and incapacitates all machinery. There is a terrible ultrasonic sound that stuns all living creatures. The creature reaches for the wounded alien, but he stops it with a single gesture. The biological robot immediately freezes and shuts down, and the terrestrial equipment goes back to normal. The wounded alien guest is rushed to a military laboratory. The medics are at a loss as to how to treat the alien, since they know absolutely nothing about his physiology. They lose precious time and the creature gets worse. Helen advises them to bring in a surgeon to remove the bullet from the patient's body. When the surgeon intervenes, the gray and stringy tissue begins to crack and separate from the alien's body. After removing the entire outer layer, the medics discover that the creature looks very much like an ordinary human being. After the operation, the alien is placed in a special protective capsule, where his condition continues to be monitored. The patient's vitals rapidly recover and he regains consciousness. At first the alien panics, but when he sees Helen in front of him, he calms down, 
she assures the alien that he is in no danger. Meanwhile, the alien visitor has already assumed full human form and looks exactly like the mountaineer from 1928. He is confusedly repeating Dr. Benson's words, as if memorizing them. After what happened in Central Park, mankind is in a real panic. Stock exchanges are closing and civilians are being prepared for urgent evacuation. Residents of other cities around the world are fleeing population centers on their own, fearing an alien invasion. While the president and vice president hide in a shelter, U.S. Secretary of Defense Regina Jackson takes control of the situation. In an emergency meeting, she is informed that the aliens have managed to hack into one of the spy satellites. Now they have all the classified information about national defenses. According to the intelligence services, similar glowing orbs of different sizes have landed elsewhere around the world. Arriving at the lab, Regina listens to the scientist's report. Flesh samples taken from the alien show the presence of DNA from three different life forms. The creature's body tissues are human, and the gray flesh shell is organic, which is a kind of protective suit of placenta. Dr. Helen suggests that the aliens had previously visited Earth and obtained a sample of human DNA. This is why the injured alien visitor was able to take on the appearance of an ordinary man. The group visits the alien in his room. He already speaks in his own sentences and asks for water. With a trembling hand, he brings the glass to his mouth, remarking aloud that it will take time for him to get used to this body. Those present look at each other at a loss, unsure of how to conduct a dialogue with the alien. Jackson decides to speak to the alien first and asks about his intentions, but gets no answer. Then Helen asks him to tell her about himself and his name. The alien introduces himself as Klaatu and says that he is a representative of a group of civilizations. The alien asks to convene a special UN meeting where he plans to speak, but Regina refuses him. After speaking with the alien, Regina orders him to be injected with truth serum and sent to a safer location for interrogation. Scientists believe that Klaatu will be the most important discovery in human history and do not want to hand him over to the Secret Service. However, the Secretary of Defense is adamant and believes that a representative of an extraterrestrial civilization poses a great danger to humanity. She intends to get as much information out of him as possible about his goals on this planet. Dr. Granier gets into an argument with Regina, but they are interrupted by Helen. She assures them that she will personally inject the alien and perform all the necessary tests. The FBI agent hands her an ampule of truth serum, but she stealthily takes an ampule of regular saline from the shelf. Regina tells Klaatu that he will be transferred to a more secure location. The alien disagrees and informs them that he intends to leave the military base. The secretary is not going to let the alien guest go, for he has illegally invaded this planet, and his huge robot has attacked the military. Klaatu explains that the bio-robot is only activated in the presence of violence. Nevertheless, Regina tells Dr. Benson to administer the injection. While administering the injection, Helen whispers faintly to the man that he must run. After the procedure, the doctor is immediately taken away by the military, and Klaatu is chained to a chair and taken to a room with a lie detector. The agent asks him a series of control questions and monitors his readings on a monitor. At some point, Klaatu reprograms the lie detector and the agent is electrocuted. The alien takes control of the man's mind and learns from him how to get out of the military base. After getting all the necessary information from him, the alien puts on the agent's suit. Using his ability to control Earth's electronics, he learns the location of the guards and stuns them all with ultrasound. An alarm goes off, but Klaatu manages to leave the building quietly. In the general commotion, Helen steals a sample of the alien's flesh. Upon learning of Klaatu's escape, Regina orders the use of all available resources to capture the fugitive. The alien arrives at the train station, where there is complete chaos due to cancelled departures. Being one-third human, Klaatu is hungry, so he uses his powers to get a free sandwich from a vending machine. The man then observes with interest the aggressive behavior of the people in the lobby of the train station. Suddenly he becomes ill and secludes himself in the bathroom, where he notices that red fluid is leaking from his bullet wound. Because of the vulnerability of the human body, the alien faints. At Helen's house, a bell rings. An unfamiliar man informs the doctor that her patient is at the station. When she realizes that the man in question is the alien, Helen immediately sets out to pick him up. The woman puts him in the car, where he meets the unfriendly Jacob. Klaatu asks Helen to give him a sample of the gray tissue that was removed from him. He dabs it on his wound and it instantly heals. Meanwhile, U.S. military forces attempt to attack the bio-robot. Detecting the approaching danger, the giant immediately activates. It seizes control of all military equipment and destroys it. All attempts to attack the alien fail, leading military commanders to despair. Helen continues to take the route Klaatu instructs her to follow. Jacob notices a huge traffic jam of cars trying to leave the city. The boy hates the alien creatures and believes they must be destroyed. He is sure that his father would have fought them if he had been alive. The trio arrives at their destination. When Jacob goes to the bathroom, Klaatu asks Helen about his family. It turns out that the boy's father was a military engineer and his mother passed away in childbirth. Dr. Benson married Jacob's father, but he left this world and the boy remained in her care. 
They walk into a fast food cafe, where Clotta meets the elderly Mr. Wu. He, too, is a member of an extraterrestrial race who was sent to Earth much earlier to study humans. Claude warns his fellow countrymen about the operation and suggests that he leave. However, Mr. Wu intends to stay on Earth. During his long years of research, he has grown to love the Earthlings and has a family of his own. Although the old man considers humans to destroy the planet, he would be happy to spend the last moments of humanity with them. The military installs super-strong protective panels around the inactive giant bio-robot, hoping in this way to block his powers. An emergency hotline receives hundreds of calls from people who have seen Klaatu. On the minister's orders, the man is presented as a fugitive criminal. In the meantime, Helen, the alien, and Jacob head for the state of New Jersey. Upon arriving in the woods, Klaatu asks to stop the car and gets out of the cabin. The woman is concerned about the alien's strange behavior, so she asks Jacob to lock himself in the car while she follows Klaatu. A swarm of insects flies past her and leads her to a lake where the alien is standing. Secretly, she watches as another glowing orb emerges from the water. At the same time, Klaatu initiates the emergence of alien spheres all over the planet. Shocked by what she sees, Helen returns to the car. Jacob questions his stepmother about the strange companion, suspecting something wrong. The boy fears that Helen will marry Klaatu and he will take his father's place. Upset by his own hunches, Jacob runs out of the car into the woods. Helen follows him when suddenly they notice a bright beam of light among the trees. It is a glowing orb that, like all the other alien spheres, is leaving the planet. Only one sphere remains on Earth, the one in which Klaatu arrived. The alien returns from the forest and tells Helen to take him back to the city. She refuses to help him and demands to know what is happening. Clotta tells her that mankind is destroying the Earth with its activities. There aren't many planets in the universe where complex biological organisms can live, so they've come to save Earth from the humans. The alien believes that the planet can be reborn if all the human infestation is removed from it. Dr. Helen tries to convince the alien that humans can change and deserve another chance, but he doesn't believe her. They have been watching humanity for years in the hope that people would change, but the situation has reached a tipping point. Despite Helen's pleas to stop, Claudu informs her that the process has already begun and nothing can be changed. One of the police patrolmen manages to get on the trail of the alien. He pulls a gun on him and tells him to surrender. Jacob asks Claudu not to hurt the policeman. The alien unemotionally declares that his pain will be short and with a flick of his hand points Helen's car in the direction of the policeman. When the man stops showing signs of life, Claudu revives him, using the energy from the car as a defibrillator. Claudu explains that he didn't intend to harm the policeman, he just wanted to remove a temporary obstacle. Helen is convinced that the alien can stop everything if he wants to. She proposes to Claudu to take him to a man who can change his mind. Meanwhile, the secret services investigate the purpose of the alien's arrival on this planet. Scientists manage to figure out that various kinds of Earth creatures are being transported in the glowing spheres. Secretary Regina, who is observing what is happening, guesses that what is happening is very similar to the rescue of living species on Noah's Ark. The American commanders realize that they must soon expect an attack. They place the bio-robot in a silo deep underground. Riots begin to break out all over the planet and cases of looting increase. Dr. Helen brings Claudu to an old Nobel Prize winning mathematical scientist she knows. The alien is distracted by a formula on the board and decides to correct it. Noticing this, the scientist joins him and they solve the unfinished problem together. The astonished scientist immediately guesses who is standing in front of him. While the adults are talking, Jacob sees an APB on TV on Claudu and calls the hotline number. The scientist asks the guest how their civilization managed to survive. Clotta tells him that their son began to die out and they had to evolve to survive. The mathematician leads his guest to believe that humanity, too, is capable of change, being on the brink of extinction. The scientist's words make the alien think, but his thoughts are interrupted by the appearance of Air Force helicopters. Clotu, Helen and Jacob leave the scientist's house in a hurry. In parting, he advises Dr. Benson to change the alien's mind not by argument, but by action. The trio tries to hide from the military in the woods. Jacob stops in an open clearing and begins shouting and waving his arms to attract the attention of the helicopters. The boy confesses to his stepmother that he is the one who called in the SWAT team, because that is what his father would have done. Emotionally, Helen says that his father is no longer around, which brings the boy to tears. Suddenly one of the soldiers grabs Dr. Benson and the helicopter immediately flies back to base. The other two helicopters spot Klaatu and prepare to fire on the target. Using his powers, the alien stuns the pilots and crashes the helicopters into each other. Jacob flees in fear into the woods, fearing that the alien may want revenge. Catching up with the boy, Klaatu saves him from falling into the river. The alien convinces the child to follow him. When Helen is taken to the headquarters, she asks the Secretary of Defense to let her go. 
somehow Claude listens to her and only she can stop him and prevent a disaster. In the meantime, special forces are experimenting on the giant bio-robot at the military base. In an attempt to pierce its armor, one of the diamond drills breaks. Inside the crack, metal insects form and multiply at an enormous rate. Soon the giant alien begins to disintegrate into millions of small particles, which turn out to be bug-like nanorobots. They instantly devour everything around them and turn everyone on the military base to dust. The military reports back to Regina about the situation. The nanorobots are impossible to destroy. The missiles launched at them only increase the number of the alien bugs. Having broken out, they have formed a huge cloud that moves in all directions and destroys everything in its path. Realizing that military force is powerless against such a threat, the Secretary of Defense agrees to release Helen to negotiate with Klaatu. Her scientist friend Michael Granier is summoned to her aid. The alien brings Jacob to a woodsman's cabin and lets him call his stepmother. The boy asks to be taken to Helen and suggests a safe place to meet. On the way to his destination, Jacob admits to the alien that he no longer wants to destroy him. The man begins to question his beliefs and the need to destroy humanity. The boy brings the humanoid to a cemetery where his father is buried. He desperately asks Claudu to resurrect his father, as he did earlier with the patrolman. However, the alien visitor's abilities are useless here. Frustrated, Jacob tells the alien to leave. Helen runs up to the boy and calms him down. Watching the emotional family reunion, Claudu is finally convinced that humanity has a positive side and recognizes that humans deserve another chance. But to do so, they need to change themselves and alter their way of life. The cloud of nanorobots is rapidly approaching New York City, eating up a huge stadium in a matter of seconds. Despite Regina's pleas to resolve the situation through peaceful negotiations, the President of the United States orders her to resume military action. Helen, Jacob, Klaatu, and Michael rush to Central Park, to the only sphere left. They burst through the roadblocks, yet the military does not go after them, but quietly lets them pass on. As they approach the sphere, the foursome notice that the park is deserted and all the military and scientists have been removed. They are immediately attacked by the Air Force, which opens fire on the alien orb, executing the orders of the Secretary of Defense. Michael passes away and the others find themselves surrounded by a cloud of nanorobots. Claudia says the three of them need to get to the orb, but the bug cloud is already flying toward it. Claude helps Helen and Jacob hide under the bridge. However, the destructive bugs have managed to penetrate Dr. Benson and the boy's body and begin to slowly eat away at them from the inside. Jacob's nose begins to leak red fluid and he loses consciousness. Helen begs Claude to at least save the child. The alien saves them both by removing the insects from their bodies and placing them in his own body. Claude confirms the old scientist's words, humans are capable of change when on the edge of the abyss. Throwing a farewell glance at Helen and Jacob, he emerges from hiding and makes his way through the cloud of nanorobots to the sphere. Claude touches the glowing orb, resulting in the destruction of all the bugs. However, along with this, all Earth technology also goes out of commission. Cities are plunged into darkness and life on the planet comes to a standstill. Claude considers this a just price for humanity for the damage they have done to Earth. The alien leaves the planet, giving humans one last chance to correct their mistakes.